At this point, the Atlantic is my nemesis. There's other socialist rags out there that are arguably better written, but this one is mine. Anyways, they released a video. No, I'm not going to explain what the video is about. Where's the fun in that? Let's just watch. Eco-anxiety is a condition that people are reporting, and it refers to the dread and helplessness that come with watching the impacts of climate change. <laughs> okay, okay, listen. As stupid as it sounds, this is actually a thing for people so thoroughly indoctrinated into the environmentalism sect of the cult of statism that they feel physically ill when they aren't committing penance for the sin of prosperity. Go on, look up eco-anxiety and you'll find hilarious articles about people upset about the lack of recycle bins in hotel rooms. I am not kidding. Water overtaking streets, flooding homes and buildings. Hurricanes are getting stronger as the oceans warm. OBJECTION! There weren't many hurricanes between 2005 and 2016. Furthermore, the slowdown in the surface warming in the last 15 years has been hypothesized to be heat being trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Oh wait! According to NASA, it's not! Poor NASA. If only they could prove their preconceived conclusions, but science just isn't on their side. And we've abandoned the Paris Climate Agreement. The Paris Accord is very unfair. It's easy to feel helpless. The Paris Agreement is proof that environmentalism isn't about helping the environment. It's about deindustrialization. It is projected to cost the world economy one to two trillion dollars a year to postpone global warming by the total of four years by 2100. And that's even assuming the goals are met and sustained, which they won't be. So what can an individual person do? So what you can do is, you know, downsize your car, put solar panels on everything, definitely stop showering, get one guitar, keep it on your back. But a, a lot of people don't want to make that sort of whole lifestyle overhaul. Of course, I can't guitar. And something I found that researchers recently have been studying is the effect of what could really happen if people ate beans instead of beef. So if instead of uh, eating beef, people ate beans. And it turns out the effect could be actually huge. Ugh. Ugh. Oh god, that's freaking disgusting. Beans. Ugh. Why? Why would you want to replace culinary perfection, beef, and substitute it with beans? Ugh. That's just gross. Ugh. I love steak. I can cook a badass steak. Give me some beef tenderloin and some spices. I'll turn any vegan carnivorous. Assuming that vegan doesn't just kill me and eat me instead. But good god, why beans? Beans are so nasty. So I know that's not immediately appetizing, but, but stick with me for a moment. No, I will not stick with you. Go away. So this next bit's an Obama speech. To spare you, dear viewer, I'll read off what he said rather than let him play. I'm confident that America will fulfill the commitments that we have made, cutting our emissions in the range of 17% by 2020, and by more than 80% in 2050, in line with the final legislation. It wouldn't matter. The costs it would have imposed on the economy, if he had his way, would have been enormous. To say nothing of how authoritarian the government would have had to become. We're going to be nowhere near that. Thank God we aren't anywhere near that. Obama was mainly talking about the energy and transportation sectors. He didn't say anything about people going vegan. Making conscious food choices is a place where a lot of ground can be made up by individuals. Researchers recently calculated that we could get somewhere between 43 and 72 percent of the way to those 2020 goals just by making that one change. Beans for beef. Count me out. But if this is all you want to do, encourage people to act on a cause they believe in voluntarily, then nope. 
You guys are still completely retarded. I want you to be free to do whatever you want, but I'm going to laugh at you. Livestock is responsible for a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, mostly in the form of methane. Beef production accounts for around 37% of all human-induced methane released into the air, and methane is 23 times as warming as carbon dioxide. No mention of how it's more warming. Nope, just warming. Methane is a magic space heater in the air that nobody knows how to shut off. Yes, we tried pulling the plug. And part of the problem is the amount of cattle feed, often soybeans, that's produced in order to keep up with demands. So that means deforestation. According to the UN, almost a third of land on Earth is used to raise livestock or to feed it. That's the main reason for cutting down the Amazon in Brazil, the world's largest exporter of red meat. The 90s called and they want their pet cows back. Damn it, did I really just make that joke? To use land to feed cows. But feeding cows beans to create meat for humans is a very inefficient way to create edible protein. So what if people ate beans? For the last time, screw your beans! Also, you earlier said we were feeding soybeans to cattle. Soybeans! Of cattle feed, often soybeans, that's produced in order to keep up with demands. I really hope you're not suggesting we eat soybeans directly. Soybeans are about as unhealthy to you humans as you can get. It's so full of hormones and carcinogens, it might as well be poison. You might as well just eat chocolate. At least chocolate's tasty. Also, the methane from cows comes from then farting. Beans cause farting. They're the musical fruit. Isn't all you're doing just cutting out the middleman or the middle cow in terms of methane emissions? And that means you could still eat chicken and pork and fish and all the other things that people should maybe probably be eating less of. I'm sure you'll come up with some contrived and viral Nazi nonsense for why people shouldn't eat tasty animals, maybe because they're racist. Now the researchers who studied the beans for beef scenario, they tried to figure out how that would affect U.S. cropland, and it turns out that could free up up to 42% of it. That's 1.6 times the surface area of California. And that would be good for woody plants, for biodiversity, it would reduce water needs, and it would cut a lot of methane out of the environment. But I'd be without my delicious steak. Obviously I know this isn't going to happen, everyone is not going to give up beef for beans, but at a time when government policy is emphatically not focused on reducing emissions and addressing climate change, it's worth being reminded that individual choices matter, and there are things that you can do. Everyone thinks beef tastes better than beans. We need to use the violence of the state to ban beef and force everyone to eat soybeans because they taste like crap and are full of carcinogens. But since the high priest of statism doesn't like the idea of throwing people in jail for eating hamburgers, <sighs> fine. I guess we'll just have to convince people to make voluntary choices individually. Ugh, gross. Now that I've come back to my senses, I'll say this. Real environmentalists support capitalism. The best way to protect the environment, private property rights. A free, prosperous society can develop better, more environmentally friendly technology. For example, wood preservatives which, a long time ago, reduced the demand for wood in reducing the amount of trees that need to be cut down. More recently, fracking opened up more natural gas deposits, which have cheapened the availability of clean burning fuels, thus reducing emissions. It goes without saying that there's nothing wrong with being environmentally conscious. Recycling and using your power as a consumer to support greener products and brands is perfectly legitimate. The truth, however, is that these environmentalists, they just want to control your life. If they can provoke eco-anxiety in you, then they own you. Don't be a slave. Do your own research before you buy into their lies. More importantly though, if environmentalists are telling you to eat soybeans, don't listen. Not only are soybeans disgusting, but they cause cancer. A good metaphor for environmentalism.